Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 35 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're teaching your Raspberry Pi who's boss. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That is straight up black coffee poured over ice. No sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at Sunfounder. Sunfounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we are using the Sunfounder Raphael kit for Raspberry Pi. The Sunfounder Raphael kit for Raspberry Pi. Most of you guys probably already have your gear. If you don't, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon where you can pick this kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be easier if we are working on identical hardware. Sunfounder, putting the tech back in toptechboy.com. <laughs> okay, enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 34. Now, just as a reminder, what we're working towards is we're working towards detethering from the desktop. We're working towards being able to build deployable, portable Raspberry Pi projects. And I would say probably less than 1% of the Raspberry Pi projects ever go beyond the desktop demonstration stage where you're like connected to your monitor and you're connected to your keyboard and you're connected with an ethernet wire and you're connected to your power supply. You know, it's just like anchored down to the desktop. But what we want to do is we want to move towards having projects that we could walk around maybe in our uh, with, with the project in our pocket or mount it somewhere in our house, you know, have something that is actually deployable. Now you can't do that in one video lesson. So we're sort of moving that direction step by step. And the first things that we're doing is we are trying to get rid of the keyboard and the monitor and to be able to put input into our project with a keypad and to be able to get output from the project in a LCD. And so therefore we have this nice little uh, setup here where we have the 16 um, button keypad and we have the LCD output. Now what I showed you in the last lesson, we sort of developed a library. We have a library which allows us to interact with the keypad and then a library that allows us to interact with the uh, interact with the LCD. And then we had th something set up to where it would sit and wait for input from the uh, from the keypad. And then once it got that input, let me switch over here to this view. Once it got that input, then it would say, you know, your value was here. So it would say, you know, what is your value? And then you would enter it and then it would display your value is. Okay, now what is wrong with that? The problem is, is that while like, like imagine that we have an alarm system where you want to go to the alarm state, the monitor state, or you want to go to the disarm state, either armed or disarmed. And while you're in the arm state, you need to be able to switch to disarm. While you're in the disarm state, you need to be able to switch to the arm. Now, if I am sitting over here waiting for input, I'm waiting for input, waiting for input, waiting for input. I'm not what? I'm not monitoring my PIR system. If I'm monitoring my PIR sensor, read sensor, read sensor, read sensor, I'm not what? I'm not looking at the keypad. So you see, we need to be listening to the PIR sensor and we need to be listening to the keypad. And you can't do both of those things at the same time because while I am waiting for keypad input, I'm not monitoring my PIR sensor. Hopefully that makes sense. So the way we did it before, we just waited for input, we got the input, and then we went and did something. But in a practical system, you need your main function going while at the same time waiting for user input. So what is the solution to that? What's your magic word? 
the magic word is threading. And threading is a way where we can, in the background, we can have a background process running. We can have a background thread running that's sitting and looking at that keypad, looking for input, seeing if anything is being input on the keypad. But then at the same time in the foreground, we are working with our sensor and working with our alarm system and working with our password and doing all of that. And then that looking at the keypad is being done in the background, and that is called threading. If you guys want to see more on threading, look at my Python playlist. And I do a really, even though I say so myself, a really nice uh, description of how threading works. But we're going to be using that today, and you should be able to figure it out just by watching me today. Okay, I think what we are going to need to do is I'm, I'm going to just give you a real quick picture of how we have this thing hooked up up here. We we have eight wires coming out of we have eight wires coming out of the keypad. I've gone over this for like the last three lessons. This goes to rows uh, starting at the left. You go row zero, row one, row two, row three, and then column zero, column one, column two, column three, and then this LCD is very easy to hook up because it's just VCC. And if you look on the back of this, if you look on the back of this, these are labeled. Maybe if I come over to this other shot you can see it a little better but you can see right here these are labeled very clearly and vcc needs to go to five volts ground needs to go to ground scl needs to go to scl and sda needs to go to sda over here on the raspberry pi and so the way we are going to hook this up is we are going to come starting at starting at row zero we're going to go row zero row one row two row three and that is going to connect to gpio 11 13 15 and 29 in order and then c0 to 31 c2 to 33 c uh or C0 to 31, C1 to 33, C2 to 35, and C3 to 37. So you just kind of go across. You're going to go across those pins coming out of the keypad, and you're just going to come down in order connecting to these GPIO pins. And then uh, let's see here. Uh, what you can see is labeled on the back here is the VCC, which will go over here to five volts, which is the upper right pin, physical pin two. And then you're gonna need a ground, which I'm using physical pin six up here. And then you can see in purple up there that SDA is labeled uh, is, is physical pin three and SCL is phys physical pin five. So the SDA and SCL pins here, you hook to those two pins. And if I went too fast, go back and look at last week's lesson or the week before that where I draw it out. But hopefully you guys already, most of you guys already have this thing hooked up. Okay, enough of all this talking. And let's see if we can jump over and start coding this thing. All right. Now in this, we're working towards creating an alarm system and that alarm system can be in three states. It can be in the arm state where it's sitting and looking at the PIR sensor. And then if it sees something, a loud alarm will go off. State two is where you're in the disarm state where it just sits and idles and it doesn't set an alarm off or doesn't look at the PIR sensor. It just kind of sits and idles. And then the third state that you can be in is the change the password state. So you're either in the arm state, you're in the disarm state, or you're in the change password state. And in each one of those states, what do you want to do? You want to be sitting and you want to be listening to you want to be sitting and you want to be listening to input, listening for input from the keypad. So that keypad process needs to be a thread and it needs to be running in the background. Now for today's lesson, we are not hooking up the PIR sensor and we're not sounding an alarm. We're just trying to get our three states set up and working. And so like 
you know, the armed state will be just sitting there saying, I'm armed, I'm armed, I'm armed. The disarmed state, I'm disarmed, I'm disarmed, I'm disarmed. And we're actually going to put in the, the, the part about changing the password. All right. Then what we'll do for next week's homework assignment, what you're to do is go in and hook up the PIR sensor and hook up a, a, either a speaker or a buzzer or a flasher or some form of alarm to hook that up. And so for next week, you'll add those components in. But today, Today, it's going to be a pretty big, pretty, pretty nice amount of work just to get just to get where we've got our basic construct working. So for a lot of you, this will be a review of threading. And then for some of you, this might be an introduction to threading. But what you need to understand is what is threading? Threading is having a process that runs in the background in parallel with whatever your main function is. Does that sound good? I hope so. Enough of this nonsense introductory talking. Let's have a sip of co coffee and let's start coding. Okay, I think I need to say, <clears throat> I think I need to say one other thing and that is remember that the stuff I'm going to show you today requires you to have a library for the keypad and a library for the LCD. And if you guys have been taking this class, you already have it. But if you're a drive-by shooter and just jumping into this lesson, you can get the two libraries that you need. The first one is the library for reading the 16-button uh, keypad. And where do you go? Two, you go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com and then you can use this happy little search icon to search on something like library for reading a 16 button keypad and then you will get this library and you will need to save it in your main Python folder whatever folder you have your program in you need to save this library in and then you need to save the library as KPLIB dot PY. KPLIB dot PY. You need to save this on your main Python program folder in the file name KPLIB.py. And then you also need the LCD. You also need the LCD library. And again, at www.toptechboy.com, you can search on library for I2C connection of the 1602. Uh, to the Raspberry Pi. Also, you need to have the I2C on your Raspberry Pi turned on. And I showed you how to do that in an earlier lesson in this Raspberry Pi class. So just go back to, to the earlier lesson in this playlist if you have not activated your I2C. Uh, that was bad. Okay, so let's... Uh, didn't mean to click that, but let's go back over here now to our code view. And with that introductory business out of the way, I think we are ready to start coding. So we've got to kind of go in and get our library. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to import LCD 1602. This will be the library that will allow us to use the LCD. Then from KP for keypad LIB. I'm going to import keypad. Keypad is the method in that file kplib that I am uh, that I am importing. Now, notice when you save the file in your folder, you, you save it as kplib.py, but when you import it, you don't put in the .py. Hopefully, that makes sense. Okay, let me. Uh, <clears throat> Let me keep going here. Now we're going to need some delays. So from time, import sleep. Now we're going to run this, this keypad in the background in a what? In a thread. So what do we need to do? We need to import threading. And that should already be part of your Python install. Now I'm going to create a keypad object that I'm going to call my pad. And that is going to be equal to keypad, the method that we imported, and now we've got to send it. What do we want our return character to be, right? If we're going to give input, we might put 1345, but now what is the return key? Well, I want the return key to be D, but you can set yours to be whatever you want, but I am just kind of in the habit of making it D. And D is kind of nice because it is in the lower right corner, which is kind of a convenient place for an enter key. So I'm going to call that the, or you call that the return char. You can't call it whatever you want because the method is looking specifically for return char. 
if you don't put return char, it will use the default, which I think I'm not sure what the default is in there, but we're going to set it to D like that. Does that make sense? Now we need to fire up our LCD. So we'll say LCD 1602 dot init. And then we've got to put in the I2C address and we know that's 0x27 if you follow along in our LCD setup video earlier in this series, you should understand this and it's a one like that. Okay. And now I need to go ahead and initially initialize my string and I'm just going to make that a uh, single quote single quote just an empty uh, just an empty string but we need to initialize that my string is what we're going to read from the keypad so I need to set that up I need to give our system an, an initial password so I'm just going to set the initial password is equal to one, two, three, four. So when you run the program, it's got a password. Well, what you can do is once you run the program, you can change the password, but we got to start with it. It's something. Now what I need to do is I need to define a function that will go out and read from the keypad. I need to define a function that will read from the keypad and this one, two, three, four needs to be inside of single quotes on both sides. Okay. So that is the initial password. Now I'm going to define read KP for read keypad. All right. On that, on that, I'm not going to pass it any parameters. All right. I'm not going to pass it any parameters, but I am going to make global my string. And that means anytime this function <clears throat> changes my string, the main program will see that change. And so the main program uses the same my string as this function does. Why? Because I made the variable here a global variable. Now what I want to do is I just want to sit and look for input from the keypad. So I will say while true, while true when it's true 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 is always true and so I'm creating an infinite loop here where I'm going to say my string is equal to my pad that's my object dot read key pad which is uh, which is one of the methods inside of uh, inside of that library okay so my string is equal to my keypad which is the object dot read keypad all right. Now what happens? It's going to go out to the keypad and it is going to hang in that method until it gets an input and then it's going to come back. So once it hits this command, it's going to go out there to the keypad listening for input and it might stay there two, three, four days until someone types something in. And so you see, this is where we've got to get to the non-blocking part. If I just ran this function, I called it, it would sit there and wait for three days for my string to be sent. And during that time, you are not what? You're not looking at your PIR sensor. And so therefore, yes, we have to define Define this function, but we can't run the function in the foreground. We have to run it as a what? As a thread. But we're just setting it up now, and then we'll set the threading part up later. So now what do we do? We'll just sleep for about 0.2 between readings. So what does this function do? It goes out and it looks at the keypad and it waits at the keypad till the keypad sends it, till the keypad sends it a string. Okay. And that will be okay if we are running this as a background thread. Guys, I know I repeat myself a lot, but I, I want it to sink in, okay? <clears throat> so now we have defined, we have defined that. That's all that function does is it is just gonna sit and constantly be looking for updates to my string. Now I need to set up the threading. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna have a read thread Okay, and read thread is going to be equal to from the library threading, and you're going to call the method thread. So threading all lower keys key all lowercase dot thread with an uppercase T, and now we've got to tell it <coughs> where do you go? What is the target? 
this thread. What is the target for this thread? Well, it is the function above read kp. And so, guys, when I put, and that should be equal, when I put target equal read kp, that means this read thread is going to be uh, is going to be using what function? This read kp. Does that make sense? Okay, so that is defining what that thread is. Now you've got to pass it the arguments, but you can see that our read kp up here doesn't have any arguments, but yet I still have to have a spot for it. So I've got to put this dangling comma here, which seems a little bit odd, but it's a comma and then a list of the arguments and there's no argument. So it's just kind of a dangling comma something that bugs me a little bit the way they did that all right now I uh, go back and watch my threading if you want to understand this but we need to set the read <coughs> thread dot daemon d-a-e-m-o-n set that true okay that just gets things working well I don't want to go through and explain that now we got to start the thread dot start like that so here I create the read thread, which is based on the uh, function read kp, and that sets it up, and then here it starts it. So once you get to here, it is going to be constantly in that read kp function, reading the keypad, reading the keypad, reading the keypad. So that is what is going on now. That is running, but it doesn't lock it up. It's reading in the background, so it starts. And even though immediately here, the function is going to hang here waiting for input. The function hangs, but the main program goes on to the next step. Why? The function is in a thread. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So now we're ready to go and do the main part of the program. So now the main part of the program is going to be while true. One is true, true, true is always true. So now this is my main loop. This is kind of like the main cog. This is kind of the main cog in uh, my program here. And so this is going to be, first of all, I'm going to have to get up, create a command. I'm going to have to create a command CMD, and that's just equal to my string. Okay, and so up in the uh, up in the read KP, it is constantly, 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 constantly looking for a new uh, looking for a new uh, uh, looking for a new my string value, and then as you go through this loop, when you get to this point, it grabs that my string and holds it in command. Now, why do I do that? Because if I'm in the middle of this wheel, I don't want to have the command change in the middle of it. I want to start with a command, my string, and then I want to keep it throughout this part of the program and then only change it when it gets to the top. Now, halfway down, my string could change, but command is not going to change. And if you think through that, you can see that that will avoid ending up in some sort of difficulty. Now, how am I going to do the password? The easiest way that I think to do the password is I'm going to have three commands. <clears throat> command A means command A means I want to arm the system. So let's come over here and look at this. Okay. If I enter A, I want to arm the system. If I enter B, I want to disarm the system. If I arm C, I want to change the password, but I don't want any Yahoo off the street coming in and disarming the system, right? So I need to have a password. Well, the easiest way for the sake of, we just kind of lost our lights there. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. There we go. Okay. Uh, kind of had a glitch in my studio lights. 
Okay, so I don't want a Yahoo to be able to come in and change the password. And so if I enter A, I have to show that I know the password. Now I could enter A and then prompt for the password, but for the sake of expediency, I think the way I will define this is, is that when you enter a command, you would type A and then you would append the password. So I would type A, one, two, three, four, and then D to enter, and then the command is going to be A, and then it's going to check to see if the password is right, right? So I'm going to always, when I give it a command, appended to the end of the command has got to be the password. So A, one, two, three, four, D, and then that would be the, uh, the input. So command is simply my string, okay? Now, if CMD, and that CMD would have A, one, two, three, four on it. So then if CMD is equal to, now I couldn't say if CMD is equal to A, one, two, three, four. Oh, let me come back over here. You didn't see that, but okay, here it is. So if CM, I can't put if CMD equals A, one, two, three, four, even though that's what I would input. Why? Because if I change the password, if I change the password, then this line of code would not work anymore. So what I need to say is if CMD, if command is equal to A, close it, concatenated, remember when you put a plus with string, it concatenates, <clears throat> A concatenated with what? Not one, two, three, four, but PWD. And that way, if I change PWD, then the program continues to work. Brilliant, brilliant, okay, brilliant. So what do we want if, <clears throat> if uh, command is equal to A, P, W, D? Well, we just wanna show that we get into this wing of the program. So I'm gonna put LCD 1602.write, okay. And I want to write to column zero, row zero, and I want to write armed like that. And I want to put some extra spaces here. And the reason I want to put extra spaces is so I'll overwrite anything that might be longer that was already there. So I want to write that. Okay. Now in our real program, what would I also do here? I would then create like a while loop. And then in that while loop, what would I be doing? I would be, or, or even I could just leave it here as long as the command doesn't change because there's the main while loop. And what I would do here is I would be reading from the PIR sensor. And then if the PIR sensor had a signal, then I would set off the alarm. But all of that is just details that you would add under this if. Okay, all that's just details that you would add under this if. Okay, but what we're trying to do now is just to get the, the kind of skeleton of the program going. So we're not going to add that stuff. We're just going to do the one thing, just say that it is armed. Now, if CMD equal B, plus B concatenated with PWD, then what do we want to do? Well, we want to do almost the same thing here. Control C. But we want to put unarmed. For some strange reason, I want to write it like this. And I think I will just because I can. Unarmed. All right. Now, if... <coughs> CMD is equal to C plus PWD. So I can't get into this without knowing the existing password. What do I want to do? I want to, uh, I want to get the new password. So how would I do that? I want to hang here until the person puts the password in. So the first thing I want to do is prompt them for the password. So I'll say LCD dot write. And then what I'm going to write to row zero, column zero. And then what I'm, what am I going to write? I'm going to write password. 
question mark. Now, remember, we don't have much space. We don't have much space on that LCD, so you can't really say please input your password. You've got to be a little bit concise in, uh, in, in the use of abbreviations. Now, I, now, I've asked for the password. Now I need to what? I need to wait for the password. So I got in here because, <clears throat> because command was C plus PWD. So as long as my string equal equal C plus PWD plus concatenate, okay. As long as this is true, what's happened, the password hasn't been entered yet. So do you see it's going to hang here? And then I'll just pass. So it got down here because you had entered C with the correct password. You got in here because you entered C with the right password. But as long as that was the last command, you're just going to sit and hang. And then when it changes because of that thread that's running, then you will pat, you will fall out. And now what was entered will become PWD. So PWD is my string, the new my string. So when my string changes, then that becomes the password. Pause this. Think about it. It's crystal clear if you will just stop and think about it. <clears throat> okay, now we'll show it to them. So we'll say LCD, uh, LCD 1602.write. And then we're going to write zero, zero, column zero, row zero, and then we'll write the PWD out to look at. And then we will, let's just say, uh, let's sleep for two seconds so they can kind of see what they did. And then let's do an LCD dot clear just so that we don't leave on the screen the password. Okay, after we walk off. Does that make sense? Okay, guys, I hope this little, this is really the this is really the gravy of the program here we're, we're really looking at gravy what we're doing is we're running in the background a process to look for keypad input and then at the same time we're doing our main business here and this gravy that i'm showing you here this is the gravy that you would use for almost any portable or deployable system because you're always going to be wanting to look for keypad input. You're always going to be in different states and you're always going to want to display something to, to an external display. And so sort of the framework that I'm showing you here is really what you would be using for almost, uh, for almost any, uh, you know, any portable system that you would be using. I ask you, my friends, how many horrible mistakes did I make in here? How many horrible mistakes did I make in here? Well, we'll come over. I kind of like this view here because you can see the errors will sh pop up up here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this thing. Okay. And it doesn't like A plus PWD, CMD. Oh, if, ah, that was terrible. Rookie mistake. So let's come back up here. What you can see is I should have had equal equals there. And hopefully you guys were screaming at me. And so then uh, that was in line 19. And I probably did it in more than one place if command. Yeah, so equal, 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 equal. I can't tell you when I was teaching kids in real classrooms how many times that you would end up with these mind-boggling errors because you used one equal instead of two equals. It's a, it's kind of a common mistake. Okay, let's come, let's go ahead and just run it here another time. Okay, if, ah, I forgot my comma there. Hopefully you guys saw that. Need a comma after the zero, a comma, and that one I got the comma in. Okay, let's try running it again. Okay, now this error is because I didn't release the GPIO pins. And guys, I don't want to go back and fix that now, but what I would need to do is I would need to add a new method. I would need to add a new method to keyboard library. And then as you're quitting the program, you call that keyboard method. You call that uh, that keyboard uh, KP lab, you call the new method in that library to release the GPIO pins because I can't release the GPIO pins out here because they were created 
in that library. So the library would need to clean up. So my cleanup here would need to go back into that new method in that class and then have that new method release the GPIO pins. But I don't want to go in and fix that right now because I think it would kind of distract us from the main business at hand here. But that's how we would do it. Maybe at some point in the future, we'll go in and clean that up. So you can see, I am kind of surprised I'm not getting any type of prompt here. And uh, the reason I'm not getting any type of prompt is because nothing has happened. So let's see if we can arm the system. How would I arm the system? I need to press A and then the password one, two, three, four, and then enter, which is D. Boom! Giddy up. Look at that. System is armed. <laughs> system is armed. Now, what you can see is, is that what is it doing? It's continuing to loop through this whole while true, but every time when it gets to this if statement, it drops down into this branch. It doesn't drop into this branch. It doesn't drop into this branch. It drops into this branch. So this is our main loop here. And then every time through, it is dropping into here. So if we add it after this, look at the PIR sensor, set the alarm, do that sort of stuff. All that sort of stuff could be done. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So now let's go back, let's go back over here. And now since I am home, since I am home, I am going to want to disarm the system. So how would I disarm the system? I would put B and then the password one, two, three, four, and then D. Boom! Who's the magic man? We are unarmed. Look at that, unarmed. Now, can we change the password. I would do that with C. What is the old password? One, two, three, four. I really shouldn't be giving you my real life passwords. Really, this is the only place I use this. Okay. And then what? Uh, how did I do that? Okay. And then I got to think. Okay. Now I hit enter. Okay. Now what is it? Okay, and I crashed out there. Okay, and in fact, I need to think through this a little bit about exactly what I was doing. So it doesn't like line 24. So I say if command equal equal C, oh, okay, I didn't do the LCD 1602 like that. So when I enter that, then it comes here and then it will prompt me for the password. Ah, you, you guys didn't see that. So the error that I had was I had like LCD dot right instead of LCD 1602 with no dot uh, with no dot between the LCD and the 1602 and dot right like that. Then it's going to prompt me for the password and then I will enter the password and it should work. So let's go ahead and run this and see, we'll get that error with the GPIO, but that's okay. All right, no error there. And so we're gonna come back over here to the overhead view. Let's just start by seeing if we can just start by changing the password. So I have C, one, two, three, four, and then D prompted me for the password. All right, and so I'm gonna go one, two, two, one and then D and then let's see I'll see the ah I, did I make that mistake again yeah okay where is that in line 30 okay so let's come back over here doesn't like line 30 okay so that will be LCD 1602 dot clear. Also, I'm kind of wondering that I didn't see it display. I didn't see it. So I wrote, what is the password? Then password is my string. And then I'm displaying password. And then I think I need to go ahead and just say plus, and let me just put some blank spaces there just so that I'm erasing anything that might already be there. I am a little concerned that it didn't show the password, but we'll try it again. 
So we'll come up here and we are going to run. Okay. And now we're going to come over so that you can see it up here. And now I'm going to try to pass, uh, change the password. So I put C and the old password, one, two, three, four, and then D to enter. Now, let me try it again. C, one, two, three, four, and enter. Okay, so I have an error here. A rather unexpected error. Let's see if I can do anything. Let's say A, one, two, three, four. You know what I think I did? I think I double clicked the D and then I think there's no telling what the password is now. And so let's just control C out of this and let's run it again. And let me be more careful this time. So I'm going to put C to change password. One, two, three, four is the old password, then D. Now it is asking me for the password and I put one, two, two, one, and then D. One, two, two, one, new password. Boom, look at that. Okay, and now it hid that. That's what we expect. Now let's see if I can arm it. Arm, one, two, two, one, and D. Armed. <laughs> Guys, this is, you see, it's not that many lines of code. It's not that many lines of code, but you really got to think through it, right? When you're starting to interact with a real human being that doesn't have a keyboard and doesn't have a screen and isn't operating like a computer, you've got to really think through these user interfaces. You really have to think through these user interfaces. And so that, my friend, is pretty cool. I got to do it again. So B one two two one and d unarmed change the password now if you wanted to get fancy <clears throat> you could save that password you could pickle it and just save it to a simple little file on the raspberry pi and then up front when you start the initial password pwd at one, two, three, four. Instead of doing that, you could read your stored password. Okay. You could do something a little bit fancier like that. All right, guys, are you having as much fun with this? Man, this is starting to get in some, into some really cool stuff. And I hope you see that while this was sort of a simple little concept, it's easy when you see me do it, but you got to really kind of think through it to make something like this work right. Okay, so what is your homework for next week? Your homework is to add the PIR sensor from your kit, add the PIR sensor so that when you're in the arm state, you're actually looking at the PIR sensor. And then what I want you to do is add some sort of audible alarm. You could add the buzzer and you could have it like create a siren sound or something like that. You could try to put a speaker right your raspberry pi has a speaker jack you could think about putting a speaker on i think i might i don't have a plug-in speaker and so i might do something like try to do like a bluetooth speaker and see if i can really blast a bluetooth speaker when i go into the alarm mode okay guys man <clears throat> i hope you all are having as much fun taking these lessons as i am making them i am really excited about the direction we're going in this class where you guys are going to be able to go mobile. You're going to be able to go mobile and portable with your projects. And again, even if you're not interested in making an alarm system, any portable project that you're going to be doing needs to kind of have this same capability. You know, the, 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 the techniques I'm teaching you here, you would really much more broadly apply to the other projects. You guys, if you enjoy this lesson, make sure to give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel <clears throat> and also share this, share this lesson with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TalkTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.